What's going on guys? I'm back on the mic today from Spectral Sound and welcome to today's video and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I make slushy basses. You know those really glitchy kind of squelchy sounding basses. I'm going to play a bit of his song Emptiness so you, just, so you can just see what I'm talking about. Okay, so you know what bass I'm talking about. It's this one right here. That sort of kind of glitchy bass. So let's go into here. I have the original clip, and in between where those basses are, I filled in with my own kind of recreation. It's not really a recreation, it's just kind of a rendition. So let's listen. Here we go. Now, like I said, it's not a recreation, it's just a rendition because those are very, they're not the same sound. I know they're not, that you won't, wouldn't hear them both and say, oh yeah, those are the same sound. It's not an accurate recreation. I'm just going to show you how to make that style basses because slushy basses are so complicated and like the only way to get them exactly would be either to ask slushy or that God would just send a miracle down into your brain and channel it through your fingers into your computer to make the sound exactly. It's near impossible. So uh, all I'm saying right here is I'm going to teach you how to make those kind of basses using the slushy emptiness bass as an example. So let's get right into this. I do have some post-processing on this, but it's very, it, it's, I mean, yeah, it is necessary because the flanger is doing a lot of movement. Also the vocoder is making it really squelchy and I have some automation of the flanger right there, but I'll get to that later. For right now, let's turn the post-processing off. This is the sound without any of the post-processing. Let me delete the original song here so I can play you my sound. That's without any of this stuff. All right, now let's get into the serum patch. I'm going to give this serum patch out for free because I know this is a complicated patch with some really detailed stuff happening. So you can find the download link for that in the description. You can go ahead and download that and I suggest you also follow along with this video to sh so I can see, you can see exactly how I recreated it. So I have a C sharp 5 going down uh, to a G4 down here. It just slides right on down because the portamento is quite large for this one. I have a mono, mono legato, and the portamento time is at 33.7, no, 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 just 33.7 milliseconds. Okay, let's get right into this. Let's turn stuff off. I have no sub in this one, just these four. I almost said three. Just these four things happening right here. All right, for LFO1, you can make this sort of shape. This is the really fast oscillator. It's at 1 16th to make the really glitchy, fast fuh -fuh 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 happening. And this LFO2 is a slow one to just rise up the entire time. You can see when I play the sound, it'll sound like nothing right now because I haven't done anything to it. But here we go. Also, let me turn off the post-processing. I just remembered that. So, yeah, okay. Let's turn off. We just have to remember it ends with the reverb. So we have squelchy one in the spectral tab for the very first oscillator. This is up one octave. The wave table position is all the way down. I have some remap on this, and this is all I did. I just messed up the sound. Like you can see when I turn the remap up, how it just messes up that oscillator. That's all I was trying to achieve here. You don't have to make this exact shape if you don't want to. Of course, I am giving out the preset so you will have it, but this is just what I did to mess up the sound and add some more movement. And that's modulating with the fast LFO, LFO1, going up and down really fast. That's all you got right there. So the level is also modulating from zero going up to 100 on this one so we get some even more movement. For oscillator B, we have a monster two, and also in the spectral tab. The spectral, the spectral waveforms are awesome. I really like them. But the wavetable position is at 49, going up 62 with a slow oscillator. So it's just a slow kind of climb up the wavetable position. You can see it. Yeah, there we go. All right, 
I didn't have any effects on this one or any warps on this one because I didn't really think it needed. That just adds extra kind of depth to the sound. Both oscillators are up one octave. The level for this one stays all the way up. It doesn't do any modulation here. All right, on to the noise oscillator. I have a bright white noise. I really like the bright white noise. It has a lot of high frequency content and a really natural sound. So the level is at 20% going up 61% with this really fast LFO right there. So just to add more movement along with the original sound oscillator A. On to the filter, I have a reverb filter on this one to really mess up the sound. That's what this filter is good for. The drive is at 33%. This right here, it doesn't look like it does anything. It's at 11%, but it actually does. Watch what it does to the reverb filter. It just changes it a lot. And I noticed at the very start right here, these really high frequencies are getting messed up. But when I turn it up just a little bit, you know, it's just to like 11 or so, it kind of just dulls the, those super high frequency peaks. So I, it doesn't get terribly out of control up there. So that's all that is doing right there. So I just turn that up a little bit. The mix is at 33% and the resonance is at 100%. Only oscillator A is going through this. This kind of bases out the sound. I didn't want to make it too messy. I just wanted to add a more solid kind of bass. Now let's go, I believe that's all for this section. I didn't add a sub because the pitch is going chaotic. Because what I did here in LFO 1, I assigned it to the master tune with a unipolar type. This is going up 25 right here. And you can hear without any of this pitch bending right here. It sounds terrible. First of all, because it's clipping. Let me turn on something to keep it clipping. Let's just flip this on for right now. You can hear without any of this, you know, pitchy motion. It sounds pretty terrible. So if we turn on the pitchiness, it gets a really more glitchy and squelchy feel. It sounds more like the original track. All right, so that's all well and good. It's up 25 for that one. And let's go into the effects section. Like I just said, the compressor, I have a multiband compressor with the threshold at negative 12.3. All this other stuff is just the same with the mix all the way up. And this, first of all, keeps it from clipping. It kind of, it controls the sound a lot and it controls the individual bands and frequencies. Hyperdimension, this is less for actual dimension and more to just keep the sound nice and fat and thick. The mix is at 29%, I didn't mess with any of this. The size is down all the way and the mix is up to 50 on this dimension. This is with the dimension. You can really hear the difference there, it just makes the sound big. All right, for the phaser, I did some interesting stuff with this. This really adds to the squelchiness of the sound. I have the rate all the way up for this one, and the depth is at 26% going up 60% with LFO2. So it's just a slow climb of the depth while the rate is going chaotic with this, uh, with the rate all the way up. You can hear that adds a lot of kind of squelch to the sound. It makes it wet. It makes it sound kind of wet. So the frequency is at 600 hertz right in the center. The feedback is at 80%. You didn't have to mess with the phase. And the mix is at 68%. Now for the filter, I did a... F <laughs> Messed it up. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize when I put my hand here and then used my little scroll bar, it actually does affect the depth right there. So what did I say? This was that I had the depth. I don't even remember what I said. I said it, but let me just open up the preset. <laughs> I messed up. Emptiness, okay. Beautiful, okay. Now let's turn off these delay and reverb. All right, now in, I did it again. Why did I do it again? Why do I keep scrolling down? Ugh. You know, I need video editing software so I can edit out all my fails, but no, y'all have to just cringe at me failing each time. Okay, without scrolling the bar, there we go, okay, let's turn the reverb and delay off. 
I don't know why I keep scrolling down anyway. Like, there's nothing to scroll down to. But okay. Flanger L6 positive for this one. I have the cutoff at 121 hertz going up 29. So it's just moving slowly upward, those peaks and dips in the spectrum. The resonance is at 70%. I don't have any drive for this one. And the high pass frequency, I have, what am I doing with this? Oh yeah, envelope one, I forgot about this. Envelope one is modulating the high pass frequency zero up to 54. Now what this is doing, the high pass frequency is basically how much peakage, I guess, is at the top of the spectrum. And it kind of slides down, like the higher the high pass frequency is, when it's all the way at full right there, that means there's an even amount of peaks and you know messing up of the filter all the way across the spectrum. But when you start to turn it down, you lose all the peaks in the high end. And then eventually when it's all the way down, you have no peaks at all. It acts as, the, acts as kind of the filter there. So I used it as a dry wet in this case almost versus just using the mix because I didn't want any feedback from this filter. It being such a complicated filter, it does give me a bit of feedback that I didn't want. So envelope one is going from zero to 54. So when I'm playing a note, it has the 54% of the high pass frequency. Not all the high frequencies are getting flanged with this or messed up with this filter, but just, you know, some of them. And then when I release, suddenly they're all gone and I don't get any feedback, it's quite nice. All right, you don't have to mess with the pan either. The mix is at 68%, so not fully affecting the whole sound, just 68% obviously for the delay now this it doesn't sound like there's delay on the sound however the delay does have a very specific purpose it almost acts like a flanger because what a flanger does i can't go into detail about this because i don't know enough about it however it does work with delaying the actual sound and controlling the amount of delay to get the certain harmonics that a flanger produces so the feedback is at 49 percent and I put, you have to make sure both of these are off because those are very important. I put the left at 2.61 and the right at 2.23. What this does, just at the small delay right there, and then they're very, really offset, they're offset just a little bit, then that'll give you a kind of wide metal sound. Now, the dry wet here is at 25%. Let me turn it all the way up so you can hear exactly what it does, just the delay. Okay, this is only the delay. kind of winds it out and gives it that sort of metallic feel. So we just mix that in right there, 25%, beautiful. I just turned the filter up to there. So we're getting like basically all of the frequencies here. And it's also on normal. You can play around with these. These can be interesting, but for right now, for this patch, I just kept it on normal. For the reverb, which is the last effect, I have some plate reverb on this. The size is very small at 9%, uh, a low pre-delay at four milliseconds. Cutting a bit of the low frequencies, it's 13%, and the high cut is at 30%, so we don't get a lot of that. The damp is at 28%, and for this one, the width is all the way down. Normally, I turn the width up to get a nice wide metallic sound, but I didn't want a big wide. It's very, it's not big in the stereo field. It's very, it's, it's right in the center. This sound isn't that wide, it's just thick. So I just thickened it up with this plate reverb. I did exactly what I did for the flanger high pass frequency in envelope one. I turned the mix all the way down and modulated it upward 36 with envelope one. So when you're holding down the note, you get 36%, I did say 36, right? Yeah, 36% of the reverb. Then when you let it go, you have no reverb. So it doesn't mess up with anything else. Okay, beautiful. I believe that covers this entire patch. Did I miss anything? This is my LFOs here. If I did miss anything, I have a very large matrix down there, which you can see, and also you can look at it further if I did miss something down in the patch below. But right now, let's look at the post-processing, because this is very important. Let's turn on the post-processing. This is, this is without any of them. This is with the post-processing. Okay, that should have sounded different. Oh no, I have to play it with the actual, I have to play it in the actual sequence here because of I'm controlling stuff in the, with the flanger. I have some automations here, so that'll drastically affect the sound. This is the sound with the post-processing. 
it's a lot bigger it has a lot more movement so let's get into this as well first off I have a vocoder this is extremely simple stuff I don't think I messed with much here at all but I have you can see the wet and all the stuff that I have going here I can't remember exactly what I messed with but it really isn't much I have the bands at 16 I think that's how they start I forget I think I'm gonna mess with the scale like the scale is all the way down and this is about here like I said you can see where all of this stuff is you can mimic this the dry wet isn't even all the way up like the mix level is at like 75 percent or so so we're not getting the full vocoder action we're getting some of the pre that went into this but we're getting most of what's going through the vocoder an EQ, this is just cutting the messy low ends before it goes into the distortion because I am distorting this. So this is all it's doing, cutting the low ends before it goes into the distortion. So I just crank this up a bit there, put it up to around there, that'll be fine. This just gives it more power and just boosts the harmonics a little bit. Multi-band compressor, all I did was open up the multi-band compressor. Like immediately, it's like OTT, you open it up and it immediately sounds better things just even out it adds a little more clean high frequency content and controls all these you know kind of piercingness of the sound so that's what i did there just open up the multi-band compressor for the flanger this is very important the mix of the flanger is also at 75 percent and i'm doing some stuff here you can see where i have all my it shows the handy dandy percentiles and numbers right there for you you can see all i did but watch it as I play it. I'm controlling this depth here with the automation clip. So let me go in here with the automation clip. You can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm just making this kind of shape just to have some extra movement in the sound as it's going down. And I, let me see, I think I did a bit. No, I didn't, the minimum and maximum are the same. Okay, yeah, that's all you have to do. This. Uh, notch right here is at 81 percent and down here this is at 11 percent so it goes up and does a nice slide down and all right i already went over this you can see the stuff that i did uh there we go all right and a final eq just to balance out these frequencies a bit boost a little bit of the highs duck down a little bit of the piercing mids and we are all good for this sound also turn it up a bit a bit to match the volume of the original track but that's just for tutorial purposes okay now i hope you found this tutorial helpful do not forget to download this preset in the description it is a super cool sound and i can see where this could come in very handy in many different situations all right i hope you enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos and if you'd like to request a sound, make sure to request it down there. I do have a long list of sound design requests, so if I don't get to yours immediately, do not get discouraged. I have not just neglected the sound. I am working to get it there. All right. Thank you for watching, and as always, peace out.